Hey guys, welcome back to part 15 of the Kotlin tutorial. The homework from the last video was to uh, complete our when expression so it works again. Since we have deleted the argument, we have to turn each branch condition into a full boolean expression. This means we can't just write in range from 0 to 11, instead we have to write it out time in 0 to 11. Instead of just 12, we have to write time is equal to 12. And the same for our branch where we have two values, time is equal to 13 or time is equal to 14. But in this case we can't separate them by a comma. Instead we have to use our logical OR operator. Because this is basically what this branch checks if time is either 13 or 14. Execute this block. So let's run this. We can see I'm gonna stay in bed all day since a Sunday is true. Let's set it to false. Run it again. Time for a nap. Let's try with another value and run it once again. And this works. Until now, we have written most of our code directly into our main function. And then from there called functions from other files to execute our work. But of course we can also create our very own functions, besides just main. We have already seen a simple example of this in the homework from part 3 to part 4, where we have created this function that prints hello kotlin to the console by adding another fun keyword below our main function, so below the closing curly brace, followed by the name of the function in camel case, and the name of a function often contains a verb because the function does something. After the name we have an empty pair of parentheses because this function doesn't take any input, followed by a block of code surrounded by curly braces with the statements we want to execute. In this example it's just one statement, the println call. The code block is also called the body of the function and this up here is the header. And then we call this function from the main function by writing out the name followed by an empty pair of parentheses, again because it doesn't take any input. And when we run this, the execution switches from our main function to the body of the say hello kotlin function. When this function finishes, execution goes back to main, but since there is no code below it, we reach the end of our program and it finishes. With functions, We can divide our code into smaller, reusable and easier to manage chunks. Of course our simple example here actually makes our code more verbose, but in real programs functions usually contain more complex code with more steps. But as we have already seen throughout this course, functions can not only execute a bunch of statements, they can also take input to work with it and even give us something back. For example the print line function takes input for whatever we want to actually print to the console, a string in this case. Or the number conversion functions we used earlier to for example change an int value to a long gave us a number of the corresponding type back. And from this video onwards we will learn more about functions and in this video we will start with how we can send input to a function. So let's say instead of just saying hello kotlin we want to make this function more reusable by passing the name of whoever we want to greet when we actually call this function. And also we want to print a longer greeting. So first of all we will rename this function. For this we press shift F6 and then we change the name to a greet, which not only changes the name here but also wherever we used it. This shortcut by the way also works for variables, file names and other names. And then to our print line call we add more text, nice to meet you. And we replace our kotlin for a string placeholder with a variable. Name is the value we want to pass to our greet function. And we do this the following way. We go between these parentheses, write the name of the variable, colon and the type, string in this case. This is the same syntax we used when we declared a variable with its type explicitly. This is called a parameter. We now declared that our function expects this value when it is called and then we can use it inside this function via this variable. And a function parameter must have an explicit type declaration because this can't be inferred. And now in our main function we have an error 
because we can't call our greet function anymore without passing a string. So let's pass for example Hans and the value that we passed here is called an argument. So the parameters are basically the placeholders and the arguments are the actual values that we passed. But these two terms are often used interchangeably, so don't get discouraged if you don't understand the difference right away. So let's run it and see if it works. Hello Hans, nice to meet you. Let's change it. Works perfectly. So with this parameter, we made our function more flexible and reusable in different scenarios. And if we wanted to change our greeting, for example to uh, how are you, we had a single place to update it, instead of having to update it wherever we used it throughout our code. And when you take a look into the source code of Printline, by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl B or Command B on Mac, you will find a very similar structure, like our greet function here. Again, Printline is one of the functions from the standard library that comes with Kotlin and provides the core functionality. Imagine if we would have to write out the internal logic of println whenever we want to print something to the console. This would be very tedious and we would very quickly lose overview of our program. And the function name, together with the parameter, should also make clear what the function does, especially if other developers might have to use this function. They shouldn't need to read all the contents of it to understand what it does. And ideally, a function should do a single logical task because it makes it easier to manage and maintain. So our greet function here shouldn't also go ahead and pull some data from the internet in the background. And sometimes it makes sense to extract parts within the function into their very own functions if they get too big and complicated, or if we want to reuse these parts. Of course, a function can also take more than one argument. Let's say in our example here we want to repeat our greeting. And we want to decide how often we want to repeat it when we call the function. So we add another parameter by going behind the first one and then we separate it by a comma. Let's call it reps, short for repetitions. And this one is a number, so it's an int value. And then we want to repeat our print line in a for loop. For i in 0 until reps. Let's surround this with curly braces, so we make it less likely that we introduce bugs later. And of course instead of zero until reps, which again excludes reps, we could also write one dot dot reps, which would include reps but start at one instead of zero. Now we have to pass this other value to our function call, again separating it by a comma. Let's print it three times and run it. This works, let's try it with 5. Perfect. Now let's try to implement the same logic with a while loop. So we change this and write while reps is bigger than 0. We want to call println and then decrement reps. But we immediately get a warning which says val cannot be reassigned. And that's an important point here. Function parameters are declared as val, so they can't be reassigned. This is different from Java, where we can change the value of a function parameter inside the function. But this is often a source for bugs, so in Kotlin they decided to not support this. Instead, if we need a mutable variable inside our function, we have to create it. As a var, let's call it reps left equals and reassign it to the value of reps. And then we can use this new value where we try to use reps before and this will work. Let's try it out. And we have the same output as before. The same as the variables we declare inside the loop block as we have seen in an earlier part. This reps left variable is scoped to the block of this function. So in other words, it only lives inside this block. And the same is the case for the function parameters. So when we go below our function call in our main function, we can't access reps or reps left or name in here. If we want to get something back from our greet function, 
we have to let it return this value explicitly. And we will learn how to do this in the next part. Okay, so this is how you make parts of your code more organizable and reusable by extracting them into functions. And now even someone who doesn't know what exactly is happening in here could at a glance see what we do inside the main function. We greet Herbert for five repetitions. I will also give you a homework. Create another function that you call print max, which takes two integer values as parameters. And what this function does is printing the larger one of these two values to the console. If both numbers have the same value, just print one of them to the console. Again, you can post your solution in the comments if you want. And if this video was helpful, please leave a like. Take care.